Welcome back to Let's Play Hand of Fate. We defeated the Queen of Plague. She died an ignoble death, aided by the mighty RNG gods on my side for some weird reason. Your victories may have made you complacent. Perhaps. But today, we've got the King of Skulls. King of Skulls is going to be interesting because of the way curses interact with this dungeon. Here, Corrupted Soul. Minus 10 max health whenever the player gains a new curse. If we could get rid of that, that would be fantastic, but there's no guarantee. Weak Risks. Weak Risks is mainly a problem if I do a lot of finishers. And without a lot of finishers, it's going to be a lot of chip damage on enemies. That's fine. But Corrupted Soul is a problem with the Hanged Man. The Hanged Man is a wonderful card, which will give us a blessing and a curse. And depending on the luck in the run, we could go pretty low on health. The Undead King. In life, he was strong. In death, he's unstoppable. Your road will end here, I suspect. We'll see. Going into the deck builder very quickly to show you, we're up to 28 equipment cards. It's been gradually going up and 28 encounter cards. I've stacked the equipment deck with a few more maces. Rat Cleaver is high enough damage and Life Slim is interesting enough. Frost Fang has a nice secondary effect that I can use. And here, Undead Bane. We haven't seen it yet, but the name is promising. I briefly tried showing off Mortal Whimsy to only to promptly replace it with a better weapon. Right now, I don't want to try out Mortal Whimsy since I want some guaranteed damage against skeletons. If the curses stack up, I'm going to have a problem otherwise. We've got a whole lot of new encounters still. The King of Skulls is pretty clear. Uh, Mr. Lionel waits for us again. Fire in the Deep got unlocked recently, and it's locked to our deck. That'll be fun when we see it. And two DLC quests, Landlocked Lubber 2 has been there for a while, and we finally annoyed mages enough that the White Council cannot be removed. We'll have to deal with that. We've still got a few cards up here, uh, which we could use tokens for. But let's give Variety a shot against this king. And of course, we are still a nomad. Better hope we don't lose any equipment along the way. I won this pentacle longer ago than you can imagine. In those many years, I have only now begun to understand its secrets. Did you see that? Lose 10 health per curse? Yeah. This here is a curse deck, if I ever saw one. The King of Skulls is the last of the undead to have slipped from my grasp. You are the first to come close to him. I don't think either of these are good equipment choices right now. But my focus is to avoid getting hit, especially if my health is going to go low. Really? Is that what you're going to do? Yes, dealer. It is. So let's explore. The Maiden. Fantastic, fantastic. I could ask for food. Food would be nice. Blessings would also be nice. Food first. I'm sure you are grateful for that. Blessings will be useful here if we run into certain cards. Mm. 
Twisted Canyon. With any luck, we can get a weapon out of it. Choose from these options. Well, that's not really the best weapon to get, but of the non-mace weapons I have in the deck, it certainly does a lot of damage. Ah, Let's druids. Meet those who worship natural forces rather than the gods. Again, a token is at stake. Druids got unlocked last session. I always want some coin. An easy story token. Already, we meet the White Council again. Agon, the one who fought some kind of el who was against some kind of eldritch monstrosity, keeping it at bay with a skull. We kind of pissed him off. As you plunder the secrets of your memories, you'll gain new cards. Some you'll wish you'd left untouched. Time to meet a new enemy, the mage. Mages are all about ranged attacks. Now, we've already seen them throw bolts out, and they can, in fact, put up a force shield like that, and you need to knock, knock them to prevent them from using that. And they can also do this three-pronged attack if you let them do it. Now, I don't always have luck in reflecting the projectile attacks, but you may end up having to do that, since otherwise, you'll find that they uh, home rather nastily. When they do this uh, three-line attack, do not step in the lines. Those lines will damage you as long as they're visible. Now, what's not obvious here is that the mage is not just doing three lines for show. Hopefully we'll see it later, but the mages can line up and if they're in the right configuration, the mages will perform a kind of triangle design with even more complicated lines and patterns of the ground, and it will hurt a lot. So far, only one mage is doing the chanting here, which is to our advantage. It's still causing me to wait a little bit more. Otherwise, if you can survive the projectiles and you just don't walk into their lines, you'll be fine until it gets more complicated. Oh crap.
Oh, crap. Mace would be good, but I'm still feeling lucky. Let's take a look at the Disciples Ring. Be wary of dipping too far into the fruits of necromancy. The seemingly sweet taste conceals an underlying stench of corruption and decay. Oh, this is pretty bad for this dungeon, so no thanks. A tool used by those who made life better for others, now in your hands. I think this is very nice. Well, looks like the mages are dealt with. We'll probably see more of them again soon. I'll take a quick look here. Ah, good. More things to identify. Mage strike would be good. War cry is a blessing I have not encountered yet. Performing most damaging attacks without building a combo. Now this is something that the game doesn't quite explain. We've seen it in a couple other item descriptions, but combos will eventually lead you to do more damaging attacks. This isn't really mentioned. The only time you'll see anything like this is if certain weapons say they increase damage as a combo incre increases. But no, your attacks would have different attack values. Plunder's ring we got recently. This could actually be quite nice. As is the golden ring of pain. Choices, choices. I think the plunder's ring is worth a shot since we just saw it. And I think I want things that the benefits to... just keep stacking up when you possess this ring. That's the idea. All sorts of terrible things live in caves. Are you sure? Previously, I had underestimated you. Then, I resented you for destroying my minions. Now, however, I cannot lose. Either way, a great annoyance is dealt with. How nice of you. The dungeon layouts are also making us waste more and more time exploring. Oh boy. Let us stake a token on their foolishness. The crown. I have the feeling this is all going to be about the crown. But let's ask about the capital quickly. Even better, blackmail. We could put this off. We could, I guess. No, no, we can't. We're meddling in things we really shouldn't meddle with. But, as I've said before, when has that stopped an adventure? And yes, a voice echoing through the traps. 
I think we're about to see what that is. You can see him at the top right. And you can see what we're trying to get to my right. We not only have to contend with traps, we have to contend with a uh, kind of weird camera. Oh god, uh, it's already starting so well. The problem is, the gold is actually really useful right now. I don't know if I can get some equipment, or if I'm going to want to remove curses later. So, I'm trying to get it, while at the same time... ...dodging this goblin up there that is just loving to bombard me. He's not too terribly dangerous, as long as you actually just watch out. But the fact that the blast can hit you through walls... ...and that I'm underestimating the strike distance of certain traps means this is a little bit more annoying than I'd like it to be. Thankfully, you, you can probably do better than I can, but as long as you don't have too low health, you'll be fine. Traps are nasty. Do not underestimate them. Mr. Lionel is not a nice goblin. But thankfully, as long as we survive the trap, we're home free. I will happily wager on the outcome. I do not think you have what it takes. Praying to the old gods and wandering aimlessly, as I said before, both are possible. I know that this will lead me to one kind of gain, but wandering aimlessly is a little bit better. Hmm. How unpleasant. No kidding. Skulls and we only have the rat cleaver. Despite our losing all that food, this is a pretty fantastic outcome. I still want that token though. The very embodiment of the earth. For some people, that is home and hearth. For you, it is a terrifying beast. The beast, all right. This token will unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. We will attack like any good adventurer does. Wasn't enough to see mages. 
we now see yet another new enemy type. A lava Golem. They look menacing, that's for sure. And they love to use certain unblockable attacks. This one is not it. They can swing at you. And you can block it. If you are very close and you attack them, they can go ahead and do a force explosion. And this blockable attack will follow you as you notice. They can also do this overhead swing, which cannot be blocked. However, since you'll be wailing on them, most of the time they'll end up doing a force explosion. You'll interrupt their blockable attack. And if you hit them enough times, they will just explode. So you're going to be dodging back and forth. Or, if I get the keys right, you could use your weapon ability. But not as they're exploding. That was bad. One lava golem at a time isn't bad. But I'm sure you can imagine this isn't the last time we've seen our friend here. More health to work with. Much good meat, do you? Already our ring is helping us. We've recovered quite a bit of health, and our gold isn't negligible. But I'm not sure we have what it takes to do this encounter. Let's try. Ah, not bad. That could be rough. One thing I want to check. I mentioned rings at a point in the past. And we now have three rings. This could be the encounter that needs them. We'll take a look. Soldiers training. This is the encounter from the soldiers training fate which has us build up a combo. You know, it can get us some items, and I'm pretty confident with my combos that I can get it done. You don't need to wash it over again. Let's make it quick and get some, get, get some loot. I was embarrassingly overconfident. Uh, that and a few parries didn't quite connect the way I wanted to. So, uh, don't be me. That was almost useless if it hadn't been for our ring. But 
but let's deal with this totem. There's a token in it for you if you win. Yep, this is why we wanted the rings. Goodbye, Ring of Hindsight. Goodbye, Gold Increase. But hello, clearing this encounter. And that's it. A steep price. Hopefully 94 gold will serve us. I'm going to use this ambush to show off something. So, you notice, I can still somewhat attack enemies when they're down. The curse... The curse in this dungeon does not actually prevent me from completely... Uh, sorry, doesn't completely prevent me from attacking an enemy that's down. All it prevents me is from doing the third actual finisher move. So you can still get two good hits in. Which is good, because otherwise it would be very hard to prevent. Fool's goals I wanted to identify. Stunning enemies is a little good. Ah, but I can buy Golden Ring of Pain now. And... Scorching Zeal and Life Blim. Well, just in case, let's stack our damage. The more wealthy you are, the more deadly you will be for a price. We might be able to use this, but Scorching Zeal and. Sorry. The Blessing and the Rat Cleaver might be enough. And we still have a chance of getting more weapons later. And food is good. Let's try to get a weapon a little later on if we can. Roaming ever forward, hunting for the truth. What brings you to play the game? Ha. <laughs> I know you will not tell me. Like all the rest, you are silent. Sure, I'll take another quick look. This store has very limited food. Only one food cards, but they do have the Hags wraps. And I mentioned previously, I like the Hag's Wraps. Some of your foes will take those curses to the grave and beyond. You treat powerful artifacts as though they were toys. Well, to the grave is kind of the point. I'm not going to find another wrap right now. I swear I've heard this tale before, from other lips than yours. Now, Wandering Minstrels is interesting. They will give me a bunch of different information here. However, in order to actually get the card token, I need to give them sufficient gold. I do have some gold, but I'm just under the threshold because I bought the Hags Wraps. So I'm going to try asking them for information about the road ahead and hopefully it'll at least be a little useful. That is incredibly useful. I would have walked straight into these hangmen. Giant eagle we already know. I don't care about it too much. And helpful priest is helpful. But I'm saving my gold. So, thank you. I don't want to risk angering them with compliments, even if I did free them from the lizard dome.
All I needed was two extra gold. Not this time, though. Sadly, 10 gold isn't going to get me anything. But now we have the labyrinth. Win this and claim my token. Wow, what a jerk. I have never seen the like, both man and beast. A most impressive creature, though I doubt you were inclined to appreciate it much at the time. The Minotaur is our third new enemy type for this session. Now, full disclosure, I'm certainly showing things off for the sake of this LP, but I have never had the chance to fight the Minotaur before. So this will be a discovery. When you are far away, the Minotaur likes to charge at you, and it is not blockable. So don't stay at too long range. The Minotaur also has a four attack combo. And you're going to have to do chip damage. No, 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 no. And this is the entirety of the Minotaur. Four attacks. Sadly, the force from the rat cleaver doesn't really do anything. One thing that could be done is to take advantage of the Minotaur when the Minotaur is actually charged at you and bonged into a wall. Let's see if we can lure it. On the wrong side. And for all that, uh, you know, would love to exploit the game's bugs, you can't really attack the walls. The most at this point that I can get is three hits, but if you notice, the Hags wraps are doing a fantastic job as long as I don't get hit. I spoke too soon. But this is probably not going to be too much fun to watch, so while I stay at a distance, or, or get run over. I'll speed this up for now. It is nice, however, that the curse from the hag's wrap backs, and the minotaur is felled. But the encounter is not over. We still have to escape the maze. and we need enough successes.
And no, I don't think I'm tracking these super well. I'm just doing my best. Like, right now. You do have to reach enough successes. And when you reach the end... Still gotta bash down the door. A choice. Select your desire. Fantastic. Very lucky pulls there. But once again, we have released a beast. Thanks to our fantastic decisions to meddle in the lives of everything that comes around us. Failure to do a lot of these would lead to... You found your way beyond the maze. I'm certain he can too. And that was an achievement quote. I'll post the info in the video itself. Hey now. That's rude. Jack of Dust really gets around. But I don't have time for you. Hag's Wrath was wonderful and slowed him down to a crawl. Ah, this gets interesting. I still have the Nomad Shield. Innocence, easily lost, never regained. Precious beyond measure. This will be fantastic. I could use some uh, revealed encounters, and cooldowns being reduced, certainly not bad. Oh, well, um, maybe we're not going up there. I certainly hope not. It has been many ages since the King of Skulls has seen combat. He is hungry. Maybe we've actually reached the floor. A challenge for you, and a token if you succeed. But before that, we need to complete the Nomad Encounters. And yes, I'm not exactly sure why this is designed this way. But this should be the exact same solution. Number one is free. Number two hurts. I will curse you, and I will make you suffer. Whoa uh, now. The pain returns. I'm sure you thought you'd seen the back of it. Number three. Makes us hungry. Number four. Hurts again. Finally. 
Number five. It comes back to the king of dust after all. That is what it means to be king. To return even after defeat. I think it's time we gave the king of dust a new whooping. For the child we gave away, for the child we lost, and for all the deserts we wandered to get here. But in the end, we could not rescue the one who was lost. Another chance to discover what your heart truly desires. What a tempting offer. The deeper you go, the harder things become. This is certainly a burden indeed. That was a curse, so we lost max health. We already have no food. We're going to want to return this fast. Fasting does have a way of focusing the mind. Now we can use that gold. A chance to buy more food. You must be relieved. We absolutely could. None of this is locked to us. And in fact, here we have the Undead Bane. This is a tough choice. I would like to have this, but we cannot unlock the card's token without actually giving back the gold. Of course, there's a small chance that the final encounter on the map will be found before we have to repay the gold. Still. You make this harder on yourself by traveling with an empty stomach. I am nice enough. I am actually going to try to give the gold back and unlock the encounter. Sorry, grab the token. I swear if the king is right here. A curse. We can only hope. Yeah, this is this is what should have hurt a lot more if we hadn't been lucky and revealed more encounter cards. The gods look upon you favorably. Self-righteous is not bad. Had I gotten a blessing at the beginning. The black deck delivers again. 
This is downright awful, and the mace would have been great. That right now. We're not doing too well. Four curses, including heavy burden. And one blessing. Let's we just play for a token now. Return this gold. And fess up. I'm honest, okay? I'm not trying to lie my way through this. Let's take a look. War cry was cool. Fleet cuffs would make me move faster. Violence for profit. Ha! <laughs> How mercenary. Why not? And I can sell it in the worst case. That, that might not be a bad idea. I want to avoid this hangman. One must now end. That's true. And my prediction for getting more maces did not come true, and I'm low on health. Let's give this a try. Again, a token is at stake. The King of Skulls has a few attacks like all boss monsters. And that shining shield is not for show. Item here. He can raise some skeletons. And he has a beam attack. And he will perform the beam attack if you are not very close. He also has, like many other bosses, unblockable attacks. This could take a while. Now, the Rat Cleaver is not so bad. It actually does have some kind of force behind it, and thankfully, the enemies he summons are not permanent. So first things first. Where possible, get rid of the ranged enemies. I can't perform too much damage, which is bad. But, ah, well, actually, no, it's his force getting rid of the enemies. Oh, I've gotten rid of people here. The hag wraps will give me a little bit of respite. Explosions caused by the enemies are very annoying. Right now, I'm hoping that the Hag's Rats will help me survive this. And they sort of are. The further curses are actually very useful, as long as I play my cards carefully and I keep him cursed as the music becomes more and more tense. I think we've got this one in the bag.
I admit you've been well used here. The King of Skulls has avoided my grasp until now. You have sent him to my realm. It is time for a long delayed reckoning. The Pentacle. Our third MacGuffin and our third set of upgrade. Third set of upgrades. New starting gear will give us a nice little slight boost. As well as our ability to advance the powerful blows more quickly. Gaining a blessing at the start of an adventure is fantastic. Especially as it will synergize with anything else that needs a blessing. And there are a couple unlocks that require blessings as well. Unfortunately, skeletons and ratmen are now more of a pain in the butt to deal with. And the ratmen leap attack is one I don't like as it comes out quickly. Take the pentacle then. It will only benefit you so far and no further. More power for you. White Council is done, but we still trifle with wizards. And with goblins. Actual goblins. And yes, they are annoying. And we get to deal with Lava Golems. The Labyrinth Escape is nice, but the White Minotaurs actually still live. They escape the Labyrinth itself. For defeating the uh, Nomad fate, we actually get the Nomadic Helm for regular use. And the Nomad's Desert. Should we really want to revisit the desert? Being kind with the gold, Netsa's Food Wagon. You have come further than I ever expected. Indeed we have. Three quarters of the court have now been felled by our hands. The Nomad has successfully found and been kind of beaten down by the memory of the child he gave away. That we gave away at some time in our past an unknown time. But before we move on with the rest of the court, it's time to give an other, another endless run a try. So I'll see you next time for another shot at endless mode.